What's good, YouTube? This is gonna be my first YouTube video on this channel. Now, the video I'm gonna be making today is going to be how to manual swap your G37 sedan, whatever you have. In my case, this is a 2013 G37 sedan. It's got 106K miles. It was automatic. I am now converting it to a manual transmission. Now, I posted a video on TikTok. A bunch of people were texting me, asking me, how do you do it? Some people told me to make a YouTube video. So this is why I am making this YouTube video. Now, I'm also making a YouTube video because when I was trying to do the swap, and when I first tried to dive into it, there was no video on how to swap this car. I couldn't find shit. If you, if anybody out there knows a video, send it my way. I've seen it, I saw a video. It was like a two part video on how to swap a G37 coupe to manual, but it wasn't very detailed. It wasn't very explained. So basically in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what you will need to do, what works and what doesn't work when it comes to manual swapping this car. Now, me, I am not a professional mechanic at all by any means, bro. I don't do the, I don't do wiring. I don't do none of that shit. This is my first time dropping a transmission out of any car. Period. Like this is my first time doing this big of a job. All I've done with this bitch right here is put coilovers and wheels on it and slammed it on its nuts. And now I got cracks in my subframe and all that shit. But anyways, we ain't worried about that. What we gonna get into today is uh the manual swap. So, um. Basically, I already been started on the swap, okay? I already have the manual training and all that. Well, I'll get into that in a little bit, but to catch you guys up, I already took out the manual training. I've already started the car. I've already done a lot of shit, but let me get more in detail with everything that's going on. So for starters, this is the manual training that I picked up for the car. Now, when I put it in the car, put everything together and try to drive it, okay? First of all, the car started. And I'm gonna show you guys what you will need to do to be able to have the car start. But anyways, the car started, long story short, training was bad, bitch wanted to go in the first or second, got jammed in third, fourth, it was fucking hard to get in neutral. So I had to rip this one out and I ordered a new training, which will be coming hopefully today as I'm recording this video and I'll be able to have the swap done and let you guys know what's up. So first thing I bought before I even get into this, first thing I bought for the swap was the tranny, okay? Uh, I wanted to secure the tranny to make sure I had everything that I needed. Next, you're definitely going to need clutch pedal. You're going to need... Hold on, I'll just show you guys. You're going to need the master cylinder. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, master cylinder. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> master cylinder and then the reservoir and all that. So basically, the way this shit works... You're gonna wanna disconnect your ABS module, pull this whole piece out. Now, if you look under here, there's bolts right there. I believe there's one right there and one right there. Fuck, my shit can't focus. Right up there, you, you see it. So you gotta do all that, unbolt all that and pull this out. You gotta pull that thing, hold on, damn, I'm zoomed in. All right, you gotta pull that thing out. Um, For the reservoir, it already has like a factory mounting location right there you have to drill two holes in the firewall because the way that hold on let me see if i can zoom in but you see that little bit of thread hanging out on the bolt right here i mean on the master right there so those are like threads that are about like i'd say about that long so there's two there's one on this side and then there's one on the other side of the master you have to drill two holes for that and then you have to drill one big hole in the middle so the master will be able to sit all the way in. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how it looks inside of the car. All right, so it's hard to see, but right here, that's the master. And as you can see, you see the daylight through the firewall right there. Obviously, bro, I didn't do this clean at all. Like I said, I had some help with this. We did the best we could. This is literally, you know, I just sent it. I didn't really know what to do. But as you can see, fuck, shit won't focus. But um, there's one bolt here, and then there's another bolt here. And that's what I'm talking about, those threads that you have to cut the holes for. That's where all this, all this mounts up at. Now, when you do this with these cars, the firewall is hella thin. So you will need to try to make some type of bracket like me, in my case. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. Hold on. 
but you see this metal piece right here i had um my welder shout out to john appreciate you so much he's been helping me a lot but i had him make me like a little bracket that i can bolt up and everything to keep the clutch pedal from flexing the firewall because that is a huge problem that shit is really thin and uh yeah we just did the best that we could see you're gonna want to cut out um your trans tunnel right here for where the shifter goes um i we cut a little too far forward you nest you really want to just try to focus back here you want to cut out right here obviously you want to cut out some in the front but you don't want to go as forward as i did because now this shit is just way too big uh, i'll end up fixing that later on but you mostly want to cut like a little bit more back here type shit and yeah everything will be able to fit up perfectly and fine the brake pedal some of you probably already know but if you don't obviously the automatic brake pedal is way more uh wider so that kind of messes with the um clutch pedal you know you don't want to have that big brake pedal in the way because you could accidentally hit the brake instead of the clutch so there's two things you could do you can either um go to a junkyard or order you know um uh 6mt brake pedal or you can just do what i did and we literally just cut it and then we found this piece that goes over it from the 6mt all you, you could just cut your brake pedal, you know, smaller size. You can use this as a template and that's how you can do that. So you don't necessarily need the 6MT brake pedal. All you're really looking for is the damn clutch pedal. So keep that in mind. All right, so clutch kit, you just get the manual transmission clutch kit for your car. Obviously for the G37, you get the manual clutch kit, whatever. Okay, whatever you do. So what you're gonna have to do is take out the automatic pilot bearing now that right there is a pain in the ass to get off but after searching for videos or whatever i actually found the easiest way to do it so what you're gonna do is take a i think it's a half inch extension or whatever it's called like the thicker extensions you're just gonna put it inside the um automatic pilot bearing you're gonna have it tilted down and you're just gonna hit it hit it hit down on the um on the extension you're gonna hit down on the extension and it'll just eventually just pull that off now if i have some videos of me doing that or whatever the case may be i will show you guys or i will try to demonstrate it because like i said i'm really late on making this video i should have started from the beginning but i'm already pretty much done with the swap so i'm just explaining everything the best that i can to access the automatic uh now to access the automatic torque converter there's a piece of the subframe that unbolts. So you wanna unbolt that to be able to access these bolts back here. There's about four bolts back here. I believe they're size uh, 12, I believe. And then the torque converter, you'll be able to access through here. And you basically, what I did was just spin the, spin the flywheel and then just loosen the bolts as I went. I don't know how you guys wanna do it, but I'm just letting you guys know. You have to remove this piece of the subframe. It's literally just like, I think about four bolts holding this piece. Take that out and you'll be able to access these bolts, get everything out. And yeah, the wiring. A lot of people ask me what I did for the wiring. All you have to do. Okay, so basically the automatic tranny, it just has one connector that controls everything, like what gear you're in, all type of shit. So what you're gonna wanna do is tap into that connector. It's just one connector that bolts up to the auto tranny. So you're gonna tap into that. And all you wanna do is wire the neutral position switch and the um, reverse light switch. You just wanna wire that shit up. So I got them all done. You wanna order these pigtails. Now I will leave the link in the description for, Even show me 10 racks. Bullets flying, I nigga for these pigtails because you definitely need these because these um, connect to the sensors on the manual training. So you will need this. Uh, some, you need some extra wiring. I believe I use 16 gauge wiring if I'm not mistaken. Everything works. Like I said, I will put a video of me starting the car. And like I said, I have a training coming in the mail today. So if that comes in, then shit, I'll be able to test drive it for you guys. But for now, the way everything's been, I've just been able to start the car. So I can confirm that what I've done with the wiring works. I will put a wiring um, diagram and I'll try to explain everything the best that I can. But right now I'm just showing you guys. You have to tap into those and get these two pigtails, extend the wiring, whatever. I know it looks like shit, but it's my first time doing it. So I'll clean that up as we go, but yeah. All right, so here's the connector that I was talking about. 
the automatic training has like this connector with all these pins so um like i said i don't know how i'm gonna edit this video but i'm gonna try to include the wiring diagram and step by step how to do the wiring because um one of my homeboys told me hakeem hashim i'm sorry bro if i got your name wrong but i really appreciate you he's actually the one that helped me figure out the wiring and told me what i needed to do and so yeah i just followed his steps he actually came over here and helped me out showed me everything worked and um yeah so you just want to tap into these pins like i said i'm gonna try my best to put a wiring diagram on this uh connector right had to go come up with plans we be running we be running bitch we feel like we the man i got my twins in you yeah that my dog for sure yeah that my dog for sure try me little nigga bitch i ain't no hope i got that pole for sure and i'm down to go let you be blow here so you guys will be able to do this shit at home like me bro I've never done wiring in my life. I don't know what I am doing. So if I can do it, y'all can do it for sure. So yeah. See, if you bought a tranny, right? You're gonna wanna have the slave, the lines, whatever. So there's a couple things you could do. You can get a elimination kit or whatever it's called. I'm not too familiar with that shit. Me, I just kept it simple. I kept it stock. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, oh, those break, you gotta replace them. Look, I'm just trying to get my swap done. I'm on a budget. I'm not gonna spend way more money than I need to. So the clutch kit that I had, it already came with the slave. I believe this is the slave. I don't know, bro, but it came with this. All I did was buy this this line right here, this piece that bolts up right there. And then this is where your clutch line will connect. So I kept it simple, got a one piece clutch line. So all it is is just bolting it up to this end right here. And like you guys saw, the other end is bolted up to the slave. So, I mean, not the slave, the master, my bad. But yeah, so keep in mind, if your training does not come with that, you definitely want to buy that or try to look for like, I don't know, an eBay clutch kit. The clutch kit I have is a little eBay clutch kit. But try to look for a clutch kit that comes with the slave. And then you can find this line for about like a 100 bucks, 80 bucks, some shit on eBay, something like that. I got the shit brand new on eBay. And then... Also, your tranny, you're going to want to make sure you have, obviously, the bracket and all that. Because I know some people buy trannies, and they're not all the way complete. So, my advice is, if you buy a tranny, just make sure it at least has a shifter on it, or it comes with something. Like, you just want to be able to check the gearing on the car, to check all that. Me, I was stupid. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just bought the tranny. You know, I thought the tranny was good. I'm not... Um, very educated with stuff so i i learned the hard way but you definitely want to be able to hook up a shifter to this damn thing whatever the case may be be able to check the gears go through all that so yeah i have you guys confused as to why this training is not in the car and why my car is not put together i don't know if i explained earlier in the video like i said i have to edit this thing and go through it but this tranny is bad it ended up being bad so i had to pull it out of the car now i ordered a brand new tranny like i said the brand new tranny should be coming in the mail today that's what it says they called me yesterday they said i need to be home when it gets delivered so i can help them out you know i gotta sign some shit, whatever so this is why this tranny is not in the car as you can see i got the automatic train right there if anybody wants to buy it let me know i'm in florida Fort Myers area, Cape Coral, shit like that, Lee County. I'm in Florida. If you want to buy the automatic training, it had 106K miles when I pulled it. It worked perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Now, here's where I'm having my problems, okay? So, obviously, the drive shaft. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do. In my case, everybody was telling me to extend my drive shaft. Now, I could have done that, right? I could have extended my drive shaft, whatever, but the nearest drive shaft shop in my area that i could find that would do it they're about three three hours away two and a half three hours away so i wasn't trying to deal with all that all i did okay and it sounds stupid because either way i had to wait but all i did was i wanted to try to be as oem as possible with the swap so i bought a manual transmission drive shaft from a g37 coupe i ordered it i put it side by side to the automatic drive shaft that came in this car originally. I put it side by side and the manual transmission drive shaft is longer. So that is a good thing, okay? Because 
the automatic drive shaft is too short for the manual tranny. So I'm just letting you guys know that right now for any confusion. The automatic drive shaft, at least with the G37 sedan, like with my swap, the automatic transmission drive shaft is way too short. It's not way too short, but it's short about an inch and a half. So you will need to extend it a little bit. If you choose to extend it, you know, that's that's you, you know what I'm saying? You could always get it extended, whatever. Me, I just went OEM as possible and I just got the manual transmission drive shaft. Now, here's the issue right here. You look right here. This is a four bolt flange. Now, the automatic differentials, they have a three bolt flange. Let me see if I can show you guys. Three bolt flange right here. You see these two? They got three bolt flanges, right? That's what the automatic drive shaft looks like. Now, I don't see, okay. I'm gonna show you guys, give me one second. Now, here's what I did to at least attempt to get this manual transmission drive shaft to fit on my diff. Since obviously my diff was automatic, what I did was I went on Facebook Marketplace, I found a diff from a 350Z. Now 350Zs, uh, if not, if I'm not mistaken, all of them have the four bolt flange on the diff. So for those of you that don't know, these flanges are removable right here. These flanges are removable. You can take an impact, unscrew this, and then you will need a puller to pull this assembly out and you can swap them, but the issue is these rings are different, but you are able to hit these rings out and swap them, replace them, and put the one from the automatic onto the manual transmission one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will try my best to show you guys in a second and explain everything, but that's what I did. I changed my flanges to try to get it to bolt up. Now, I'm still having slight issues with the drive shaft, so that's why I don't want to tell you guys that this 100% works because I don't know for sure. But if you wanted to, you I'm pretty sure you guys could just extend your automatic drive shaft, save yourself the headache. But me, I'm just going a different route. You know, some might say that I'm doing too much, but this is what I want to do. Now coming to the diff, as you can see, this is the ring I was talking about that you can bang out. This is the flange. I put it on and everything, everything works. Uh, obviously I can't turn it. I got the e-brake up right now, but everything bolts up. Now the issue I'm having is I believe this shit is leaking. <laughs> like this shit is leaking, um, diff fluid and shit, but I got to look in more into that. But the automatic diffs also, they have like this, um, this like a uh, piece of metal that sticks out like this to go into the automatic dry shaft. So what I did was I literally just grinded that shit off and called it a fucking day. Just grinded it off. It looks super shitty, but I just did my best on it. This is my first time doing some shit like that. So I just grinded that off, whatever. And then obviously it bolts up. The tranny would be over here and it just, everything just bolts up. For the e-brake, because I know people are gonna have questions on the e-brake. So this cable that you see right here, this piece, this assembly from this metal part this way, this is from a um, G37 coupe. I ordered this on Z1 Motorsports. This is the parking brake cable. And then this bracket right here is just the regular bracket from the automatic. And what I did was I had to cut off a piece of it to be able to fish the line through it. But yeah, I just have all this mounted up right here. I'll try to tuck that up. I have all this mounted up right here and I'm about to go up into the car and show you guys the e-brake. All right, moving on to the e-brake. I got an e-brake mounted up, everything works. So, okay, obviously you just order e-brake for the manual version of your G37, of course. It's got mounting bolt areas. You're gonna wanna do some serious measuring, figure out where you want it at. Now, I bought the manual transmission center console for this car. So I just used that as a way to kind of guide me on where I want this mounted at. I drew my holes, cut out some of the carpet that was underneath this and mounted everything up, bolted everything up. Everything seems to be good. Everything works. Everything works fine. Everything's good. 
And then this is the bracket I was talking about from under there that you're gonna route the e-brake cable through. It's gonna come out this way, come out right here. And yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, when you're messing with all this stuff and if you wanna unplug one of these or whatever, you definitely wanna have the battery out of the car or disconnect it, whatever you wanna do. But you definitely wanna have the battery not connected at all when you're messing with any of this shit. Because I believe this is an airbag module, if I'm not mistaken. So you don't want to fuck with that when the car still has electric electricity. <laughs> My fault. But yeah, this is how I got the e-brake situation set up. Like I said, you could order this uh, cable, the whole cable assembly from Z1 Motorsports like I did. And you're just going to route it up. And you're going to want to move the, like, see this edge right here? This edge right here? You're going to want to move it as far forward as possible just because... The e-brake cable can be a little weird when you're trying to mount it up. So what I did was I just tightened this bolt, I grabbed the whole e-brake and moved it forward to the point where it felt like it was getting tight. And then that's where I found where I wanted to mount it at. Also, you have this little thing right here, which I still have to figure out how I'm gonna put this, but I don't know what this does, but this is in the way and there's like a bracket that's like goes up across and down right here that could be getting in the way of your e-brake so just keep that in mind you're gonna want to fuck with that but yeah anyways y'all uh, i'm gonna update y'all like i said when i get the training and everything get everything bolted up and um show you guys you know if i have any more problems anything whatever i'm gonna show you guys whatever it is also you're definitely gonna be on limp mode after you do the wiring connect everything the car's gonna be on limp mode it won't be able to go over like i say like 3k rpm I, something like that so you're definitely gonna wanna hit up a tuner, try to get that situated, get a little tune, a little bypass. But other than that, after you do pretty much everything I just showed you in this video, your car should be manual swap, you should be good. Like I said, I'm gonna try to include the wiring diagram and shit. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, whatever. Maybe I'll put it, link in the description, something. I'm gonna do something, try to figure that out for you guys because the wiring can be scary to some people and could be a headache. And if you don't know what you're doing, I literally have step-by-step -step on how to do it. So I'm gonna show you guys. Peace. Coming back to the video. My transmission just came in. Shout out to the FedEx driver. But uh, about to open this thing up. Here she is, boys. Brand new. This thing is mint. It literally came with everything. Came with everything except the shifter. It's got sensors on it. It's got everything. It's got the boots. It's got all that. So shout out to Z1 Motorsports. And uh, I also ordered fluid with it because I didn't have the fluid. Um, but yeah, about to get wrenching away. Put this in the car. And hopefully this thing is on the road today. Let's get it. All right, y'all. So, um, this is way later in the video, but uh, the car is off of jack stands. The car does in fact run and drive. I put in the new tranny. I didn't record cause I had a lot of work to do, but pretty much all I did was put the tranny in, bolt up the drive shaft, uh bled the clutch line started her up she runs and drives still got a few tweaks and touch-ups i gotta make but the car runs and drives fine there's nothing wrong as far as i can see i will update you guys if i have any issues but i mean the car is good the car is running and driving everything seems to be good on the car i got the interior all put together and stuff but uh yeah if you guys like i said have any more questions on this swap you guys could always dm me on instagram follow me on instagram by the way dm me i will try my best to answer all questions anything uh send links to parts stuff like that i'll help you guys out but that's pretty much it for this video so 
it was kind of out of order kind of out of place but i did the best i could it's my first real youtube video so but yeah i'm super fucking happy right now the car's running and driving and uh i got a whole bunch of shit to clean up got the old training all shit got to put all my wheels all type of shit but uh catch you guys in the next video thank you guys for watching hit the like subscribe share this video send it to all your friends all your vq niggas that want to do the manual swap all that